Mysterious places that hold their secrets. Number 8. Frankenstein's Castle 200 years ago, a woman named Mary Shelley came up with a story that would live on for eternity. While at a party near Lake Geneva in Switzerland, she was inspired to write Frankenstein. Most people are still familiar with the story of Dr. Frankenstein and his monstrous creation. But what not many people know is that the name Frankenstein predates Mary Shelley by several centuries. Above the German city of Darmstadt, perched on the Odenwald Mountains, is Frankenstein Castle. The castle is currently in ruins, which is no surprise since it was built roughly 800 years ago. It was constructed by Lord Conrad II Reis of Bruburg in the year 1250. The name itself, Frankenstein, comes from some very old words. Frank is a reference to an ancient Germanic tribe. The Stein means stone. Put together, Frankenstein means stone of the Franks. Lord Conrad was the founder of the Free Imperial Barony of Frankenstein. He was the most powerful man in the area during the 13th century. But it wasn't until 1673 that the dark legend of Frankenstein took root. That was the year Johann Conrad Dippel was born in the castle. He grew to become a fearsome alchemist. He created an elixir that he called Dippel's oil from pulverized bones, some animal and perhaps some human. It was a dark and nasty substance used to poison well water. Besides being one of the first pioneers of chemical warfare, Dippel was interested in human anatomy and resurrecting the dead. It was rumored that Dippel pillaged corpses from local cemeteries and conducted medical experiments on the deceased. The people of the town were horrified. It was likely the townsfolk who first started telling tales of how Dippel created a monster, allegedly by stitching together pieces of human cadavers and bringing it to life with a bolt of lightning. There are other wacky stories surrounding Castle Frankenstein. Another legend is that Lord Georg fought a dragon and was stung by its poisonous tail. Then he died and nobody saw the dragon again. You can still see Lord Georg's tomb in the village church. In 2008, ghost hunters descended on Frankenstein Castle, declaring it a hotspot for paranormal activity. The ghost hunters even picked up a recording of a ghostly voice speaking in an old German language. Would you be brave enough to stay the night at Frankenstein Castle? Number 7. The Portal In 1908, an expedition of scientists supposedly traveled into the deserts of Sudan searching for ancient treasure. There is no official record of the expedition taking place, though H.P. Lovecraft did mention a similar expedition in his paranormal writings. The expedition was supposedly lost in a sandstorm with their bodies never discovered. All attempts to find the scientists failed. Nobody was ever able to track down their position from when they vanished. There's a mysterious rumor that claims the scientists stumbled upon a secret portal, a doorway in the desert to another world. The 1908 expedition could be nothing but a myth, but portals to other dimensions, now that's more common than people realize. There are multiple stone gateways across the world that may have been used by the ancients to travel great distances. Researcher Freddie Silva says that throughout history human beings have lost their connection to the Earth, but in antiquity, people recognized certain energetic fields and hotspots that emitted great power. Pagans recognized these places and built temples on them, so did people from other cultures, such as those of Lake Titicaca in Peru. Take for example the Puerta de Hayumaca, or the Gate of the Gods. It is an enormous doorway near Lake Titicaca, 23 feet tall carved into a solid rock. The doorway doesn't appear to lead anywhere. It's a megalithic doorway that physically looks like a stone niche. Experts believe it rests on a ley line. They think the shamans at Lake Titicaca understood the power emitted by the ley line and used it to activate a portal carved into the stone. When Spanish conquistadors arrived, they heard the story of a priest named Amaru Maru. The priest supposedly used the portal of Hayumaka to escape the Spanish. Then, with the destruction of the Inca Empire, the knowledge of how to operate the portal was lost forever. And now for number 6. But first, it's shout-out time. I wanted to give a big thank you to Master Yoda 394 and Palm Glasser 9418 for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about mysterious places. Number 6. Crossbones Cemetery 
In South London, there is a disused burial ground called Crossbones. It closed in 1853, with its history still extremely muddled. Nobody knows for certain just when a graveyard first started being used, nor what its original purpose was. The first historical mention of Crossbones was in a report from 1598. John Stowe mentioned a churchyard specifically used for the burials of single women not far from the clink. The clink might be a slang term for jail, but it was a real prison from the 12th century in London. According to John's report, the graveyard was used for single women who were forbidden the traditional rites of the church. These were women who lived sinful lives and were excluded from a proper Christian burial. Therefore, they were given their own despicable burial ground. No mention of the church was made again until 200 years later, in 1795. It was called the Single Woman's Burying Ground, but by the time it was mentioned by antiquary William Taylor in 1833, its name had changed to Crossbones. It was believed to hold the corpses of an estimated 15,000 people. The reason it closed in 1853 was that the burial ground had become completely overburdened by the dead. Any additional bodies would have caused a public health emergency because there was nowhere to put them. In modern times, the corpses were removed and the site was used for warehousing and commercial buildings. There's nothing more to remember the dead except a brass plaque installed by the city council in 2006. An excavation in 1992, when many of the bodies were moved to a different cemetery, revealed something a little spooky. The bodies were dumped in mass graves. Tests on the corpses showed that many of the people suffered from diseases like smallpox or tuberculosis. The belief now is that Crossbones was originally established as a graveyard for prostitutes, or as they called them in the 16th century, single women or Winchester geese. It's believed Crossbones later doubled as a graveyard for the sick and deceased. Number 5. The Palace of Versailles The grandest palace in all of Europe is also one of the most mysterious. Some have called the Palace of Versailles the most magnificent building in the world. If you've ever walked through its halls, you might just agree with them. It was once the majestic residence of the kings and queens of France. The cost to build the ridiculously gigantic palace, if it were made today, would cost over two billion dollars. In the palace's grand apartments, there is a secret escape passage. A secret set of stairs was installed for the king to escape with his mistress in the event of an emergency. It was built under the order of Louis XIV, who was notorious for his mistresses. During the French Revolution, it's believed the secret passageway was used to smuggle nobility from the palace. It's obviously not a secret anymore, but still a fantastically dark piece of history. There wasn't just a secret passage, there was also a secret room. King Louis XV had a secret room commissioned that he used specifically for holding covert meetings. It's known as the Secret du Roi, located near the private apartments of the king. Constructed in the 18th century, the secret chamber was made 100% soundproof. It was only accessible through a fake bookcase and a hidden mechanism, just like what you see in the movies. Yes, they really do exist. In 1774, Marie Antoinette was given a smaller palace on the grounds of the bigger palace called the Petit Trianon. It was a private retreat where she could get away from the stressful life of living in the big palace. It too had its own secret passageway. The passage allowed Marie Antoinette to travel from the small palace into the bigger palace without having to deal with the pesky staff and servants. Marie's passage is unique because it's a legitimate mystery. Nobody knows where the passageway is today. Historians have never been able to find either entrance, though all records show it definitely existed. Number 4. Hell House College St. Mary's College was established in Ilchester, Maryland in the 19th century as a Roman Catholic seminary. These days, locals call it Hell House College. It was shut down after a hundred years of service. Rumor has it the ruins of the college have been used in the years since for devil worship and cultic rituals. Hell House College sits on a granite cliff overlooking the Patapsco River like the ruins of a Gothic castle. It was built following the failure of George Ellicott Jr. to turn Ilchester into a popular destination. George had a tiny homestead in Ilchester when the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad was inaugurated in 1830. Anticipating visitors, he turned his homestead into a tavern and hotel, but nobody showed up. 
George Ellicott was forced to sell his property in 1866 to the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer. You don't hear of these people much anymore, but they were once a fairly popular branch of Christianity known as Redemptorists. At its peak, the college housed about 150 students along with a small number of priests and faculty. As time wore on, nobody wanted to study with the Redemptorists anymore. They were rapidly falling out of favor. By 1972, the college closed its doors. It wasn't until the 1980s that rumor began to spread regarding why the college really closed down. It was said a deranged priest went on a rampage and brutally murdered multiple female students. There were other, even more horrific stories. It was rumored that the priest who did the murdering was possessed by demonic forces and that the college was a front for Satanists. Whatever may have happened, there is no record of it. Hell House College is now an abandoned ruin inside the Patapsco Valley State Park. Most of the structures were burned to the ground, with only a few pieces of concrete and a sad pavilion still standing. Do you believe the rumors of Hell House College? Let me know in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 3. Gossack Circle one of the strangest Neolithic sites in the world is located in a wheat field in Germany. The wheat field is dotted with row after row of old wooden posts. It looks beyond peculiar, and that's because it is. The Gothic Circle, also called the Gothic Sun Observatory, might just be the oldest Neolithic enclosure in Europe, and nobody's ever heard of it. Archaeological evidence has shown it was built as early as 6,900 years ago. It continued to be used by an unknown culture of prehistoric humans, only for about 200 years. Nothing more recent than 4700 BC that's ever been found on the site. What has been found are a lot of secrets and mysteries. Archaeologists excavated bovine skulls and ancient human skeletons. This has led experts to believe the Gothic Circle was used in ritualistic sacrifice. But that wasn't all. Experts also believe the circle was used to track the movements of the celestial world. Its purpose was for Neolithic farmers to use it as a calendar. The huge wooden stakes currently forming the structure are as new as they look. Remnants of the circle were only discovered in 1991, then excavated a decade later. Researchers only recently decided to reconstruct what the Gothic Circle looked like when it was originally finished. They used accurate wooden stakes to make the fence and mimic the shape of the original structure. Ever since it opened, people have come here to celebrate the winter solstice. Number 2. Ancient Miletus Ancient Miletus was a prosperous Greek city located in western Anatolia, Turkey. People lived here during the Neolithic period, about a thousand years after Gothic Circle was abandoned. By the time the Bronze Age rolled around, Miletus had become a powerful city, grown rich through maritime trade. They traded heavily with the Minoan civilization. They built majestic temples, impenetrable fortresses, and beautiful harbors. But then they got a bit too wealthy for their own good. They were attacked and conquered by King Morshili II of the Hittite Empire. The Late Bronze Age saw a period of violence, famine, and political instability. Miletus wasn't the only city to suffer. Civilizations all across Greece, North Africa, the Balkans, pretty much everywhere near the Mediterranean Sea, collapsed in dumpster fires. During this period, Miletus vanished off the face of the map. So did the Hittite Empire, the Mycenaean Kingdoms, the Amorite States, and so many more. The secret of ancient Miletus is that historians don't know exactly what happened to it. Archaeological evidence shows there was a great fire in the city. This has led some to propose a seafaring confederation known as the Sea People decimated the city by flame. But nothing is confirmed. Unlike many cities of the ancient world found in the Bronze Age, Miletus rose from the ashes. By 387 BC, Miletus was back in action. Only it was under control of the Persians. In 334 BC, Alexander the Great conquered the city. Most of what remains within the borders of Miletus dates from the Roman and Byzantine periods. Almost no ancient sculptures from before the collapse can be found here. Miletus is also important because it appears in the Bible. According to the New Testament, Miletus was the city in which the Apostle John met with the Church of Ephesus during his missionary journey in 57 AD. Miletus was only abandoned after the Turks got a hold of it in the 14th century. Number 1. Gwalior Fort 
Gwalior Fort is considered one of the most picturesque fortresses in all of India. It's also considered one of the most impenetrable strongholds ever built in the country. Yet nobody knows when it was constructed. Most of its history is steeped in legend and confusion. The story most people believe is that the Gwalior Fort was built by King Suraj Sen in the year 3 AD. At the time, the king was suffering from incurable leprosy. He was on death's door when a saint by the name of Gwalapa came into town. The saint offered the king a drink of blessed water from a sacred pond, and he was instantly healed. As a gesture of gratitude, the king named the fortress and the town after Gwalapa. Archaeologists haven't found any evidence that this really happened. The oldest monuments and inscriptions date to the 6th century, 500 years after King Suraj Sen was supposedly cured of leprosy. The first recorded emperor to rule the city was Mahira Kula. Then, in the 9th century, the Muslims captured the fort and held it for 300 years. It changed hands a heap of times afterward. It was captured by the Tomars in 1398, then they lost the fort in 1516. It was ruled by the Mughals, the Marathas, and later the East India Company. Which of these incredible ancient places do you wish you could explore? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. Remember to hit subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon for more awesome videos.